Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today I will introduce you to chapter 6, which is uh, developing fundamental PLC wiring diagrams and ladder. This chapter will cover electromagnetic control relays, contactor, motor starters, manual operated switches, mechanically operated switches, sensors, output control device, holding circuits, and how you can convert this relay schematic into the PLC uh, ladder diagram. So the first part is a theory basically and uh, will explain to you the hardware of, of each of these uh, type of the devices. And the second part, which is the holding circuit and converting release uh, schematic into PLC ladder, will be we will do the ladder diagram. So we will go very fast on the theory, and you can read uh, on your own, and you can find more information uh, from the Google. You can Google out so many information if you want to know more. So I just give some of it. Uh, level. Next is sensors. We have so many sensors. Uh, the sensor that I will show you is some of it. This is proximity sensors which detect the presence of an object. And I believe uh, uh, if you do a project later, some of you might use this type of sensor. Okay, so the advantage of it if you don't need uh, the physical contact. So we use the this uh, sensor to detect the object. This is how uh, uh, proximity sensors operate. It depend the, 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 the principle is different depend on type of metal being detected. What type of uh, 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 of the things that you want to uh, detect. The method of connecting a proximity sensor is varies. There are two wire sensor or two wire, uh, three wire sensors. So you can so you can choose uh, which one that you want and uh, these are available in the market where you can choose uh, from. This uh, is the application, uh, one of the application where we uh, use this uh, proximity sensors which equip with this LED uh, status indicator so that you can verify uh, the output of uh, switching action. A small uh, leakage current flow through the sensor even when the output is turned off. So when the sensor is on, a small uh, voltage drop is lost across its output terminal. So to operate, uh, properly, a proximity sensor can be powered continuously and the bleeder uh, resistor allows enough current for the sensor to operate but not enough to turn on the input. So this is uh, one of the way how we can use this proximity sensor. So next is the capacity proximity sensor. When it says this capacity, so it operates within the electrostatic uh, uh, field and uh, actuated by both con uh, conductive and non-conductive material. So uh, let's say you have a production line that detects the bottle, for instance, you can use this type of uh, 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 sensors. Okay, these are uh, the other types. Uh, you can uh, use also for paper, glass, liquid, and cloth. Okay, this, the other one is the magnetic read switch, which is composed of two flat contact types and that are sealed by a glass tube. So when a magnetic force is generated parallel to the read switch and the reads will drawn together to actuate the, the switch. So this, the other type is photo, uh, photovoltaic cell or also the photoconductive cell. So these are the example of light sensors 
maybe we also sometimes these sensors also we use at home sometimes uh, when to detect the intensity of the light okay during daytime and night time this is the other type of photoelectric sensors okay it operates by detecting a visible or visible beam of the light and respond to the change in the receive of light intensity the other type is how uh, we use this scan technique which refer to the method used by these photoelectric sensors so this uh, true beam can scan uh, technique places the transmitter and receiver direct in direct line with uh, uh, each other so uh, we, we scan uh, we put the uh, we put uh, for instance the car when it goes through so it will scan okay so the light beam travel uh, in what direction through the beam so when uh, uh, the object is blocked so there is no transmission between the uh, transceiver and receiver so the other one is uh, the uh, retroreflective scan technique which is uh, this uh, arrangement requires use of separate reflector mounted across the sensor to return the light back to the receiver and also we can use a fiber optic use a flexible cable which is containing tiny uh, fibers that channel light from emitter to the receiver so these uh, fiber optic sensors are completely immune to all uh, forms sort of electrical interference so that's why uh, uh, now most of the sensor they want to move to this uh, fiber optic because of this reason this is the normal that we, 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 we uh, use the barcode scanners okay like in supermarket okay we, we scan the bar uh, the barcode so that we, uh, the, the price is uh, the price will appear okay so this is one of the application okay uh, normally at the packaging uh, area uh, the other one is ultrasonic sensor which operate by sending the high frequency sound wave to a target and measuring time uh, the time it takes for the pass to bounce back okay so uh, let's say for the level okay the the light will travel to the level to the uh, liquid and will bounce back so that is uh, the count how they, uh, they they calculate the uh, level the current level okay the strain gauge which convert the mechanical strain into the electrical signal I believe we have learned this uh, uh, some of this uh, strain gauge in subject instrumentation and measurement so this uh, uh, this is one of the application of this strain gauge where force is applied to the load cell we use the load cell we cause it to bend so this band action also uh, distorts the physical size of the cell and uh, we, we which is turned into the its resist, uh, resistance so we calculate the, the the rate of change in resistance more couple one type of the uh, temperature sensor okay so it has two type of uh, metal uh, two type of dissimilar metals that we use we can um, uh, generate the predictable DC voltage and you can know what is the amount of the current uh, uh, temperature for flow meter we use a flow meter to uh, measure the flow which the turbine flow meter use the rotation speed to indicate the flow velocity Okay, so I won't uh, go detail on this. And the commuter generator, which convert the rotational speed into analog voltage signal, where, where we can uh, use for control application. Okay. Encoder. Okay, so normally used to convert the linear or rotary motion into binary digital signal. Okay, how much uh, the 
uh, hole inside the encoder will determine uh, how to count, I mean to count how much the motor uh, was rotated. Okay, so use this optical uh, uh, opcoder, which is we use light. Uh, so shining on the optical disc with line and slot that interrupt the beam of light to an optical sensor. So this electronic circuit will count how many times uh, the the light has interrupted uh, of the beam and generate the encoder in digital output files. L uh, last one is the output control device, which I have explained uh, in. Um, uh, chapter 1, I guess I have shown you uh, a few types of uh, output control device. This is the most uh, uh, commonly used, like we have lights, yeah, like we use in our lab. We have control relay, okay, we have motor starter, and also we have a mo a motor overload relay contact. Okay, we have alarm, heater, selenoid, selenoid vibe, a valve, motor, on and etc. So this uh, 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 actuator is uh, okay, basically actuator is a device that converts an electrical signal into mechanical movement like motors. Okay, the electrical mechanical signal is an actuator that uses electrical energy to magnetically cause a mechanical control action. So this is the symbol for uh, actuators for the selenoid. These are the selenoid wife, wolf, uh, which uh, uh, selenoid wife is an electromechanical device that work by passing an electrical uh, current through a coil thereby changing the state of, of the wolf. Okay, so this is when the this energize. Okay, when this uh, uh, this cord is de-energized. So it will look like this, and meaning when this de-energize, so it will open, uh, the outlet will open, and uh, normally it will, for instance, we use in, in pipeline, okay, so the pipeline, uh, uh, at the opening is open. When we energize, so this orifice wire will be closed, so there's no uh, fluid go through the valve. Okay, this is the symbol during the de-energized state and uh, energized state okay so we can replace it with uh, normally uh, open and when it energized it will uh, close step on motor so basically you rotate in this increment so when the electrical command pass uh, applied to, to it in a proper sequence so every resolution is divided into a number of step and motor when we send a voltage pulse for each step so the amount of rotation is directly proportional to the number of pulses and speed of rotation is related to frequency of the pulses so this these are the uh, uh, step of motor the other one is servo motor so servo motor is operating in closed loop mode uh, and while this step of motor uh, operate in open loop so i hope you uh, know what is the difference between open loop and closed loop as I explained in chapter 1. Okay, so I think uh, this is the first part of this chapter. So I will stop here. I hope you can uh, keep viewing this video to help you to understand. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum.